Yes, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure to, to host uh, together with, uh, with you this, uh, this event. I would like to, to thank all the esteemed uh, entities who uh, decided and they who see the commercial interest in developing the, the, the corridor. Uh, as uh, Steve mentioned, uh, we observe a number of corridors that are being created across Europe and uh, Asia, but uh, I think it's quite prudent to uh, look at the definition of the, of the corridor, because if we look at the definition of the corridor co according to the Collins English Dictionary, we will spot a number of uh, words like uh, passage connecting, strip of land that affords access, connection, access, place for running that comes from the Latin word correra. But I would like to avoid one thing at the end of this uh, session that the definition uh, of a corridor that is uh, epitomized by a soccer uh, definition uh, of corridor. That means an era of the pitch between the defenders and the goalkeeper in which it is not clear who should take responsibility of dealing with the ball played into. So uh, this is, uh, I don't expect that we will sign an MOU at the end of this, uh, of this session, but uh, I think uh, we have all parties to the deal at the table and the number of people that uh, act as an audience, which I, whom I would like also to welcome to this, uh, to this uh, present presentation. I would like to speak a little bit about the pool of dynasty and for that purpose, I will share the, the presentation. I think it will go straight on. Yes, yes uh, uh, I understand that you can see this and uh, uh, for those who are not very familiar with the, with the pool of dynasty, uh, we are the, uh, the main Polish port, uh, which has a share in the Polish uh, transshipment of 46%. We, last year, we uh, handled 48 million tons of cargo for the Polish economy, which is ranked seventh in Europe and 22nd in the world. We are also ranked uh, fourth among the largest ports on the Baltic Sea and ranked second in the Baltic Sea in the terms of the containers uh, football. Uh, we are a universal port. That means that we can handle uh, any cargo that comes from the ship to the shore and uh, vice versa. Um, well, next slide. Yes. Uh, why we want to create a corridor? Uh, the obvious reason is to offer better service uh, to the customers and uh, all those uh, who uh, consider to be a part of the maritime uh, business and the cargo owners, the beneficial cargo owners. As you can see, currently we, we, we have an alternative. We want to create an alternative to the existing uh, connections. We have had a lengthy discussion with uh, my colleagues from the commercial department and from the marketing department. Uh, what we can offer that differs from the existing uh, existing uh, solutions. Of course, we have the limitation of the phosphorus straits. Uh, we have that means that uh, according to the regulations, the the maximum size of the ship is approximately ten thousand cube. At the same time, we have the, the Baltic Sea limitation on the Danish Straits uh, that allows us to accept ships up to 24,000 TU or even slightly bigger. So uh, why we want to, to create the opportunity for the, uh, for the ship owners, for the ship the cargo owners is to shorten the, the way to, from the Black Sea to the Baltic Sea. The, of course, the, the shortest way is through the corridor on land. We also have to take into the consideration the fact of the economies that are around the Baltic Sea and around the Black Sea. Because if you we look at the Baltic Sea, we see that we have eight economies with the total GDP of seven trillion US dollars. At the same time, at the Black Sea, 
we have the five economies with the total GDP of 1.3 billion trillion dollars. If we exclude from the Baltic Sea part Russia, which has uh, access on both sides to both cities, so we still have the economies with 5.3 trillion dollars. That creates an opportunity for exchange of the cargo around these areas. We can not disregard, but we, we should underline the role of Turkey in this system, because according to the Standard Chartered Bank and IMF, Turkey is going to be ranked fifth in the global top 10 list in 2030. Uh, so uh, after, of course, China, India, USA and Indonesia. So the volume of traffic, the, vo the, the, the production uh, that will come from Turkey and the surrounding country will determine the, the opportunity that uh, should be uh, reflected in the, in the corridor we want to, to create. Um, currently, uh, we gathered some data from uh, the Polish customs uh, office regarding the traffic between Poland and Ukraine. This is Ukraine only in terms of containers. And you can see uh, quite a growth in this direction. But if we look opposite, it looks even better. So this is only Ukraine by land. Uh, we cannot today uh, present data about the traffic between uh, Poland, Ukraine, Turkey, and other countries around say, Romania, Bulgaria, uh, Georgia, uh, Ukraine, of course, uh, to see the true the volume of the cargo get, that can be put on the on the corridors uh, on trains. Uh, this is the the picture we would, that uh, the red line is something that maybe I would like to start from because currently we don't have a direct service to USA, Canada, and South America from the from port of Dice. As you can see, we can serve. Uh, a number of uh, ports in the in the Baltic Sea with the direct feeder service from the port of uh, Gdańsk. I presume that my colleague from DCP will elaborate a little bit more about this uh, this opportunity. But as you can see, we have a direct uh, connection between uh, Ukrainian uh, ports uh, by truck today, uh, Odessa, Chernomorsk, uh, Yuzhny. Uh, to, to Poland. Uh, we have three country crossings uh, uh, with one which is the standard former Soviet Union gauge for, for trains to Slavkov. Um, and as you can see, uh, there are three terminals that specialize also in the bulk cargoes. And we can shorten the distance between Baltic Sea and the Black Sea by approximately eight to 10 days. That's, that I think it means something for the, for the cargo owners. Uh, how we prepared to, to serve this uh, potential uh, traffic via the corridor. In the recent two years, uh, we together with the Polish railway system invested more than 280 million euros in upgrading the railway system in the port of Gdańsk. Uh, by creation of 80 kilometers of new rails, upgrading free cargo stations. Uh, this uh, should also uh, offer for today unlimited access to the port of Gdańsk from the south of Europe. And this is one of the pictures that uh, in the best way presents uh, our current opportunity and the corridor to the south, because this picture is facing directly the south of Europe. So the access to the port is uh, all already ready. So uh, this is all from me. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Slavomir. That's a very interesting overview. If, if I may take advantage of my position as moderator, just to ask um, one question at this stage. Um, and, and that relates to um, the capacity on, on the rail service. So obviously there's a number of different modes of transport that we can 
utilize, whether it's short sea in feeders or whether it's rail or whether it's by road. I just wonder what it what is the capacity on, on the rail that you have that, that would allow people to take advantage of this uh, transit time USP that you mentioned? Uh, the capacity currently is utilized in 25 to, to 40 to, to 30 percent. We we understand that the, the, the train mode of transport is the, the mode of transport that will dominate the, the ports uh, operations. Today, uh, approximately 30 to 35 percent of cargo arrives to port of, port of Dinsk by, by train. Uh, comparing to the port of Hamburg, where this ratio uh, oscillates around 45 percent, we still have a lot of uh, a lot to do. But the, the infrastructure is ready, ready. The only limitation for our port is actually the the bridge across the river. But uh, as I said, we have still we still utilize only we are utilizing only 30, 25 to 30 percent of the capacity. So. Uh, the recent investments uh, and the ongoing investments, which are being done by the Polish railway system, uh, they translate actually into the uh, speedy service from the south of Poland. But the only element we need to for, for this connection is the, the Ukrainian port, the Ukrainian railway system. So ports are ready, ports is ready, the Polish railway system is ready. So we need a connection from the border of, of with Ukraine to the Ukrainian ports. And of course, the, the, the willingness of the and the readiness of the uh, rural uh, ship owners in the Black Sea to, to join the, the system. Well, that, that's that's understood. I mean, I mean, you mentioned utilization. So clearly, there's there's quite a bit of uh, excess capacity currently available. Yes. I, I just I just wonder, do you have the the numbers for the actual capacity of the rail then? So if, if it's 25 to 30 percent utilized, what what would 100 percent utilize look like in terms of uh, TUs? In terms of TUs, I, I cannot present the data. Um, maybe Dominic will be uh, in the position. To OK, show no, no, no problem. It, it's just um, ob obviously this may be. You know, one one downside. If uh, I mean, maybe there's more capacity by sea than there is by by rail. That's what I'm trying to get to. But that's that's fine. We can we, we can talk as well with with Dominic a little bit later, just to try and get to that detail. Currently, um, we have approximately 18 to 19 trains going to the DCT. This is the capacity. Yeah, this is the, the actual number for, 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 for today. But uh, looking at the numbers in the, in the traffic between China and, uh, and Europe, uh, only 4% is trains. Yeah, yeah. And then 19% is uh, planes and still 77% is still ships. Yeah, 